contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there, will be, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sandeep Thomas Matthew, Head Investor Relations, for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our Q2 FI24 earnings call. Along with me, I have Mr. Amit Jain, our global CEO, uh, Mr. Bahadur Dastur, our CFO, and SGA, our investor relations advisor. We will start the call with the key operational highlights for the quarter and outlook by Mr. Amit, and then followed by the financial highlights by Mr. Bahadur, post which we will open up for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, Amit. Uh, thanks, Sandeep, and a warm welcome to all the participants on this call. I would like to give a quick update on our business operations and outlook on the solar industry. Uh, beginning with our order book, the company announced new orders totaling approximately Rs. 2,640 crores in Q2 FY24, aided by strong ordering momentum seen in India. Coupled with our order inflow of Rs. 466 crores announced in Q1, our total order inflow in H1 FY24 is Rs. 3,106 crores. All the orders announced in the first half are from domestic market. We received an order for an approximately 375 megawatt project in Khavra, Gujarat from NTPC in Q2 FY24. This is the third order from NTPC and is strategically located between the first two projects we had earlier announced in FY23. This project is on currently EPC basis, including supply of the module. The total contract price, including operation and maintenance for three years, is Rs. 1,535 crores, and this amount is inclusive of taxes. We also won our first order from Gujarat Industrial Power Company Limited, GIPCL, in Q2 FY24 for a 750 megawatt DC project, again located in Khawra region of Gujarat. Scope of work in this project is BUS only. Total bid value, including operation and maintenance for three years, is INR 1130 crores. Uh, coupled with NTPC projects, today SW REL has won and will be executing nearly 4.2 gigawatt of projects in Khawra region of Gujarat, including NTPC and DIPCL. We are targeting to maintain our historical domestic margins in these projects as well. In addition to Khabra projects, the company has also received a new order of approximately 490 MW DC for another BOS project for a million subsidiary of French power major NG. As stated earlier, total EPC contract value of the project, one in Q2 FI24, is approximately Rs. 2,640 crores. With these new orders, our unexecuted border book, as on September 30, 2023, has increased to approximately 6,835 crores, with nearly 90% of the order book comprising of domestic EPC projects, which are executable over the next 12 to 18 months. With the inclusion of Nigeria MOU that was announced in, announced in September 2022, our order pipeline is anticipated to enhance significantly. We are working with various stakeholders to finalize the DE and EPC agreement for the project. Uh, in terms of outlook, our domestic order pipeline has grown very strongly and is alone approximately 16 gigawatts, with PSUs contributing more than 55% and private sector IPP 45%. Our business development teams are working very hard and remain focused to deliver the strong growth trajectory we are targeting this year. In the international market, while we have been adopting a more cautious approach with new orders, we are beginning to make headway with our clients for projects aligned with our risk metrics. As stated in earlier calls, we reiterate that lumpiness in order flow is to be expected with EPC companies like ours and 
timeline for achieving project closure would be very depending on a host of factors including finalization of contractual terms, financial closure, etc. Now moving to industry outlook, we continue to witness an unprecedented decline in price of silicon, vapor, cells and modules in the last 12 months as per well. And as per the industry report, with module price now falling to nearly 15 cents per watt peak and is even below the historic close we have seen during the pre-pandemic times. With significant support, supply pressure, due to emergence of new production capacities in China, industry analysts continue to anticipate module prices to remain depressed for some time. The price remain, the time remains right for some projects to come on stream aided by lower LCOE, which should translate into more work for EPC players like us. The Indian solar EPC market continues to remain in a very attractive position, and we are hopeful of capitalizing on the strong order pipeline. Solar operation and maintenance sector has emerged as a distinct and highly profitable market, boasting its own unique landscape and dynamics. With the steady rise of operational solar plants, the retendering of o and contracts is becoming a burgeoning prospect for providers such as ourselves. We remain focused on expanding our o and portfolio, placing an enhanced emphasis on third-party o and within global markets, utilizing both organic and inorganic strategies. With this, I will ask Bahadur to take you through the consolidated financial highlights. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit. I will start with an update on the key quarterly results. <coughs> Revenue from operations for the quarter ended September was 759 crore. Revenue has improved significantly both year on year and sequential basis, aided by higher contributions from the domestic EPC segment. Revenues were up 88% YOY and 47% quarter on quarter. Company has reported a consolidated gross margin of 8.6% in the second quarter FY24 and gross margins in the first half FY24 are approximately 10%. Domestic EPC margins in the second quarter FY24 were also approximately 10%. Our unexecuted order book continues to comprise over 90% of domestic EPC business. International EPC margins were negative 2% in 2Q FY24. O&M segment margins rebounded this quarter and touched more than 23% and are now more in line in what we are hoping to be steady state margins in this segment. Company reported a positive console EBITDA in the second quarter, FY24. That loss during the year was 54 crores. During the quarter, it was 54 crores. On a standalone basis, the company achieved EBITDA break even and was also back positive. Now, coming to the balance sheet and our debt situation. As on September 30th, 2023, our net debt stood at 2,123 crores and our net worth stood at negative 415 crores. The company and its subsidiaries had loan payments of 329 crores to various banks in the month of September 23. Out of the above, the company made payments of 194 crores. Company had availed 250 crores short-term loan for working capital for one year, which was due on September 30th. 2023. The company was able to repay 115 crores from internal accruals and an amount of 135 crores remains overdue as at date. Rating downgrades forced our BV invocation in July 2023 made sourcing loans more expensive and difficult. With respect to our results, the auditors have made certain observations in the consolidated and standalone financial statements as emphasis of matter. The company incurred losses during the previous year and has continued to incur losses during the six month ended 30th September 2023. Further, as on 30th September, the company had a repayment due of a short term loan for working capital purposes from a bank amounting to 250 crores, of which 135 crores is yet to be repaid as at date. The aforesaid events results in cross default in respect of certain other loans bearing a fixed maturity period. Consequently, non-current loans aggregating to 516 crores have also been classified as current borrowings in the statement, even though the company has not received notice of recall of loans. 
The company is working towards a resolution plan with its lenders by way of funds to be raised from equity or debt issue and amounts recoverable from the promoter selling shareholders in accordance with the indemnity agreement. The management is confident of successfully consummating the above plans. In the standalone financial statements, the emphasis of matter reads, the company's investment in a subsidiary and loans given with accrued interest thereon and other receivables aggregates to 2,395 crores as of 30th of September. We are confident that these amounts are good for recoveries based on the projected cash flows expected from revenue contracts where letters of intent or memorandum of understanding have been signed, refund of encashed bank guarantees, recovery of remediation costs incurred on projects, and amounts recoverable under the indemnity agreement with the promoter selling shareholders. <clears throat> The board of directors of the company at its meeting held on 27th September 2023 considered and approved raising of funds by way of issuance of equity shares, global depository receipts, depository receipts, foreign currency convertible bonds, fully partly convertible debentures, non-convertible debentures and or any other financial instrument convertible into equity shares including warrants or a combination of any of the securities mentioned above in one or more tranches through one or more public and or private offerings, including by way of a qualified institutional placement or any combination thereof or any other method as may be permitted under applicable laws to eligible investors for an aggregate amount not exceeding 1,500 crores in one or more tranches subject to regulatory statutory approvals as may be required including the approval of the shareholders of the company through a postal ballot, which is presently in process. With this, we can now open the floor to questions and answers. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take the first question from the line of Bajrang Bafna from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations for uh, a good set of numbers uh, during the last quarter and uh, the good guidance in the coming quarters as well. So, sir, my first question pertains to, uh, you know, the kind of visibility that you are getting, uh, you know, from the domestic market because uh, to our understanding, the order pipeline for the PSUs itself stands closer to 20,000 sort of megawatt on a yearly basis. And we have secured uh, close to 3,000 crore of orders in the first half. So sort of pipeline that is visible for the second half and considering, uh, you know, the, the rating downgrade, uh, what implications it would have, uh, you know, on the new order intake as far as domestic orders are concerned. And some visibility, uh, you know, on the overseas orders would be uh, really uh, appreciated. So, so that's the first question. And uh, and and my second question uh, uh, purely pertains to, uh, you know, sort of uh, 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 margins, you know, that 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 is uh, visualized because I believe that the Kavda you have got a lot of capabilities now, uh, you know, in terms of uh, resource mobilization because uh, the reliance orders are also anticipated to come you know uh, maybe in the near to medium term so uh, so in terms of margin trajectory how are you seeing uh, uh, you know the margin trajectory for these domestic orders uh, would it be equally uh, interesting and my third question pertains to uh, purely on the on the build up of uh, your uh, onm uh, uh, revenues because uh, you know i think the progression of orders is going very robust you know uh, in the near to medium term so what sort of trajectory that you are seeing for the build up of this uh, annuity on m revenue and what sort of margins are are predictable uh, you know uh, on the on m side maybe from next two to three years perspective that will be really appreciated thank you sir yeah good morning 
So to start with the uh, uh, order of the pipeline in India, I would say the pipeline is very robust and at this point of time the pipeline is 16 gigawatt. And as you rightly said, the major portion of the pipeline is coming out of the FM. So as you have would have seen from our performance in last three quarters, that we have been cons uh, consistently performing well and very competitive in PSU bids. So looking at past performance, we are hopeful that we'll be able to maintain our competitive uh, approach uh, in the bidding and we'll be equally successful as we would have in past. So we are very, very hopeful and uh, expect that our performance is going to be as robust as it has been with respect to public sector and IPP bids. So order pipeline is going to remain very, very robust. Now coming back to international pipeline, so we are working in multiple geographies with various clients including Australia, Africa and Middle East. So we are working on those uh, projects and South Africa and Africa is also emerging as a very, very strong market. So we are favorably placed in some of the projects and we have received, received uh, LNTP, that is called limited notice to proceed for a reworks on some of the projects. So we are progressing well on international markets as well. Now coming to your question on profitability and concentration in Khabra, so you are absolutely right. So we have achieved a significant scale in Khabra and with, with like concentration of the projects in one location, there would be optimization of overhead and we expect to increase our margins on the projects which we get, get in Khabra. Uh, it is in public domain that RIL has Reliance Industries are also going to be allocated land uh, in Khabra. So whenever the projects are announced and uh, when, whenever we get the orders. So we hope if we work on those projects, of course, we will be taking the, using the economies of scale, we will be improving our margins on those projects as well. Now coming to one and with the significant EPC portfolio and retendering of the projects which are completed earlier and some of the projects whose portfolio being implemented by IPP, we expect the strong robust growth uh, in our uh, O&M business portfolio. So I, I think it would be growing at a much faster rate than it has grown in the past. So that's what I would like to say. So the, all the business trajectory, both EPC as well as O&M, look for a very, very strong and robust growth. And we'll be able to maintain our historical margins which we have maintained in the market markets. Just to add to what Mr. Amit has said, in terms of OM, we expect the portfolio to actually give us revenue which will be about two and a half to three times in about two years. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. My first question is with respect to the debt shortfall that you are experiencing. Uh, is there any thought from the promoter's perspective to infuse funds? And secondly, related to that is, uh, since there has been a default, uh, uh, do the other debt covenants also come into force, which might uh, drive other defaults? So, Puneet, I already mentioned that because of the covenants, uh, the lenders do have a right to recall the loans. However, none of the lenders have recalled the loans. So, to meet the uh, requirements of the accounting standard, these loans have been classified as current. Uh, as far as the promoter inflows are concerned, the company has raised a claim on the promoter under the indemnity agreement for 418 crores. The, the correct due date for receipt of this is November 30th, uh, 2023. We are, of course, in discussions with them requesting an early repayment. And, and any flows from the 40% reliance promoter? Are they infusing anything to support the company? The company is anyway looking at a long-term solution, which is what we mentioned. Uh, the board has approved and right now is with the shareholders under a postal ballot. So we're looking at more uh, long-term solution rather than something which is uh, just uh, short cap. Understood. My second question is with respect to the business. Uh, in your new contracts, uh, you, you've uh, once again taken projects which have uh, 
you know module price risk and uh, what is the thought process behind it and if you can also talk about what is the you know price of module that you talked about 15 cents and for what delivery period does it pertain yeah so as far as the domestic market is concerned so we have uh, the complete backup of pricing for these projects uh, which we have taken with module so there is not no absolutely no risk at all the modules are being sold from indian suppliers and we have backup for supply from china suppliers as well so as far as this particular project is concerned we are fully protected and as far as the downtrend is concerned we are seeing the continuous correction because there is a glut in the market and significant additional capacity addition in the chinese market and they have huge stockpile of modules in european market so that's why module prices are coming down and we we ex- expect at least in the short term this trend to continue and and for the ntpc project uh, would you have to take indian modules or do you have the option to take chinese modules as well so uh, as to, for the projects to be completed till march we have an option of taking chinese modules wherever it's there but after that if there is no change in the policy we have to go with indian suppliers and india also now we have significant capacity then for this project we are backed up by indian suppliers also and, and just a bit on the technical side if you do import modules before 31st march but the cod gets delayed beyond march uh, who bears the project risk because the government will not in that case allow the, the cod right i mean the CO will no, not allow if the scheduled completion is before march then we are allowed to import but in this in this particular case as per the policy guidelines we have to source modules from india if there is no further extension or waiver of alm by the government of india just sorry just lastly and what is the price from indian module manufacturers indian module manufacturer pricing are varying from 21 cents per watt peak to 23 cents per watt peak and so that's very so thank you so much thank you a reminder to all the participants anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and 1 we'll take the next question from the line of rabindranath nayak from sunidhi securities please go ahead uh thank you uh, and congratulations for a really better number as compared to the first quarter so uh, my uh, question regarding this gross margin there is a contraction in the gross margin from 11.4% to 1 to 8.7% in this uh, second quarter so uh, uh, how you see the gross margin going ahead in the coming quarters that is the first question and uh, if there is a there is a uh, positive beta margin uh, in this quarter uh, so also the other expenditure has come down substantially so whether this is uh, related to some uh, provision right take or uh, foreign exchange gain which is reflected in a cash flow statement is it correct to view the uh, things in that way so that is my second question and uh, there was the third question say about the uh, what is the indian because the indemnity due to other financial assets uh, has gone up from 260 crore in the year uh, uh, q1 to around uh, 17 18 crores so what is the indemnity proceed uh, in this uh, you know uh, item uh, so we can clarify uh, can we clarify the balance line item for the indemnity proceeds and sir thirdly uh, fourthly about the rise of unpaid billable revenue so you have actually this uh, other current assets there is a unpayable revenue so which is uh, this item was actually 818 crores in uh, end of uh, uh, 23 it has gone up to 1303 crores so what is the unwilled revenue uh, in this uh, item if you can clarify that would be helpful and uh, about the ntpc projects that you have now duplicating whether the projects are the durables are back ended or it is you know the uh, you know, uh, absolute completion of the entire project to the majority of the project will be given or it is you know, of uh, based upon the project completion you will get the orders uh, the receipts particularly so can you please clarify all these things sir? thank you very much i will mean, not you will have to repeat because there were far too many questions uh, and i i would need you to just repeat them one by one so, so i am uh, regarding uh, gross margins why the gross yes. margins are around 8% if you see our investor presentation which was uploaded yesterday 
in the domestic segment we have got 567 crores of revenue with 57 crores of gross margin which means the domestic gross margins are maintaining the 10% trajectory which we have been talking about there is however 141 crores of international uh, epc revenue for which there is no gross margin except for a small loss of 3 crores and that is what is suppressing on an arithmetical basis your overall gross margin so that is that is the answer to your first question. If you don't mind, if you could quickly repeat your second and so I'll answer each question as and how it comes. Well, positive EBITDA, because whether there is some uh, right back or uh, foreign exchange gain that you have booked in this quarter? So foreign exchange gain is booked quarter on quarter as and how it arises. Again, if you look at our financials, our operational EBITDA, uh, on a consolidated basis is shown before the forex gain. There was a forex gain of 22 crores in this quarter. Uh, for quarter is uh, September 23, 24, 23. Yeah. Your next question. Uh, uh, is there any right break on the provisions? Or there is there no right break in the provisions? Because it is reflecting in your cash flow statement that you are asking. No, there is a right back of excess provisions in projects to the extent they are not required. So that has been done in case of our Australia and US project. Similarly, there are always some small additional provisions which are made, for example, in our Africa project. These are things which go on happening and they sort of balance themselves out. There is a provision right back, but that is in the project and in the gross margin. So as you can see, the gross margins in the domestic business, as I mentioned, are maintaining themselves. And there is just a negative three crore uh, margin in, in terms of the international. There is no right back of provisions in case of overheads as such. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and about the indemnity deals, so because the line item, of, line item has gone up from 260 crores to 718 crores. So, what is the line item uh, for the indemnity proceed for the end of this uh, second quarter? So, indemnity items are put out at various line items, and there is no single line item as such because uh, there is no heading called indemnity items as per the Schedule 3 to financial statements. They are there in receivables, they are there in uh, taxes, direct and indirect, they are there in other financials and other current assets as well. The total indemnity receivables which are lying as assets as on 30th of September are roughly 1400 crores, out of which 400 crores as what has been claimed from the promoters post 30th of September. So after okay. that, in terms of what is lying in the balance sheet would be a number of about 1,000 to maybe 1,050 crores. Okay. So that means this 1,718 crores, 1,400 crores pertains to the indemnity proceed, right? No, no, I said it is there in various places and it is not in a single okay. place. Other, other current and financial assets also include unbilled receivables, which are, which are put over there. Okay. And this line item, unbilled revenue, uh, particularly the current assets getting unbilled revenues, that has gone up from 818 crores to 1,303 crores. So uh, how should we see this uh, uh, thing panning out in the coming quarters and the year ahead? Unbilled revenue gets converted almost on a monthly basis from unbilled to build. So these items will keep panning out. You are, look <clears throat> you are looking at it as an absolute number. But month on month, if it gets put in unbuilt, in the next month, generally it moves to billing and therefore receivables. So whether it will be linked to the sales or it is, you know, uh, it is not, uh, it will not say that there is uh, some linkage in the sales uh, from, for this item? Unbuilt revenue is worked out on the basis of percentage of completion. What moves to sales is on the basis of agreed milestones with customers. Okay. Okay, so that means the 1303 crores is going to decline in the coming quarters or it is going to uh, remain higher because you are going to increase the sales. So whether it will increase or it will uh, remain controlled at the level? It will depend on uh, the milestone which is achieved on every quarter end. There could be a decline if the milestones are significantly reached or in case there is material supply which has been sent out for which the billing happens in the next month, then there could be an unbilled revenue also which comes. So there is there is no positive or negative trend that can be attributed. It all depends on the circumstances. 
Okay. And about sir, NPTC projects, whether it is uh, the, the project facilities are uh, dependent or it is in a milestone basis, it is paid? There will always be milestone basis. Okay. okay. All projects, the receivables are always milestone based, which is agreed with the customer at the time of signing the contract. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mahesh Bindri from LIC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so you just mentioned about the O&M business. So what is the current contribution to our sales? And uh, if you could elaborate on how much this opportunity can become maybe three or five years uh, down the line and what will be the our role in that? So O&M is made out of uh, two major parts. One is where we do the O&M during the defect liability period and is a part of our contract. And the third, and the second is uh, where we call what we call it as third-party O&M, where we actually go and bid for EPC plants which have been built by someone else, or when our DLP is over and it is out for an open uh, bid. So as of right now, the O&M trajectory is expected to be in the range of about 200 to 250 crores in the current financial year, with the new inflows that we have got both which are part of our contracts and which are projects which are expected to be completed, we expect that that number should go to about two and a half times in a couple of years. Okay, and sir, uh, the margin in this case will be high, right? So it's an average 25 to 30% gross margin business. Uh, there is a slightly higher margin in the international side as compared to the domestic side. So it all depends on the mix. But that is the range that we are in. This is a gross margin. There is very little overheads in terms of the OSM business. So EBITDA margins will be like 20%? Yes, approximately. Okay. And sir, uh, I'm just, uh, 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 I mean, if I look at three, uh, maybe five down the line, so many solar plants are coming up uh, all over India. So the, the install base is going to go up significantly from here on. So maybe... Uh, fire down line how much this business can become for us i mean just i'm not looking for a number as such but purely from uh directional purpose uh how uh things yeah. will pan out maybe fire down the line yeah. so as bahadur admitted given in next couple of years we are expecting this business to become two two and a half times so even in next two years based on upon the order which we are booking and we are expecting more and more completed plants which had initial one and contracts will go for retendering, we expect this order book to go significantly. But as you said, over five years or ten years down the line, more and more contracts which are constructed by other EPC players or which have been in operation by other operators will come for retendering. So with the installed base, this market of one and where even if we are not doing EPC grows significantly. And we expect this number to grow exponentially. So as you rightly said, we are not putting any number, but in this particular segment, we see a very, very strong and robust growth. So two and a half times you can imagine yourself what kind of numbers it can be. Uh, numbers can be pretty, pretty good. We can average, we are taking 10 to 12% CAGR in other segments. So it can be 20 to 25% CAGR in uh, even beyond two years in this particular segment of OMN. Uh, sir, on OMN side, uh, I mean, are we the largest, I mean, in terms of size, are we the largest in India? Uh, I mean, uh, who are the main competitors in the segment? We are like other players in organized sector. I, I would say we, we are the largest one and the competition is from the smaller players. Uh, and the other, like other in the big range, I would say the developers who are managing their own portfolio, otherwise for third party and uh, LTPC segment, we are among the largest. Not even in India, globally we are among the largest players. So maybe five years down the line, or uh, maybe uh, business structure or revenue structure will change in favor of more OEM business that that is you know high margins and generation without you any. Know, margin. The O&M business will contribute significantly to the bottom line, but EPC portfolio will also grow significantly in India. So as far as the revenue contribution is there, O&M will rise significantly, but so is EPC. So I, I would say EPC will remain to be a major contributor, but on the bottom line, 
one end will will add significantly to the bottom line having the high bottom uh, like uh, high top line and uh, high bottom line because this business will have you know predictable cash flows um, high margins and absolutely absolutely the numbers i mean yeah absolutely right so that's what i'm saying this business will grow significantly so it will have a sizable size right now we are at 200 250 crore so this may grow significantly but we see the business will also grow significantly so both both the business put together uh, the top line will be great and but, but, but to the bottom line in proportion to the top line one and will be contributing much more to the bottom line and so this as a percentage of revenue as a percentage of revenue Sure, sure, sir. And sir, last question from my end. Uh, this O&M opportunity, we are uh, only looking into India, or is it that globally also we are looking uh, to tap this market? So we are like as we said in our opening speech that we are looking at both organic and inorganic routes, and we are addressing this uh, internationally. So in the geography where we are working, when we are doing EPC, we are doing O&M for those projects. We are doing O&M in South America. We are doing O&M in Africa. We have done O&M in Middle East and Australia, so we are active in all the geographies. And now we are working to get, and that, that's one of the things which we are working actively to increase our third-party portfolio for O&M in international market. So we will be operating globally wherever our footprints are for O&M business as well. May I just to give you a further statement for both domestic and international is roughly half and half. So it is not that we are not operating uh, O&M in the international space. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshad Gandhi from Harshad H Gandhi Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Okay. Yeah. So first uh, uh, clarification: Any uh, does this default of our consider our ability eligibility to participate in future tenders in India or abroad? Yes, uh, we are engaging with our customers, and I think we are working on on the funding option. So we'll be remain eligible to quote for all the domestic and international projects. Okay, but but has this default hampered our eligibility currently? No, no, no. As of now, nothing has been impacted, and all the bidding process, negotiation with the customer, where we were in that process, is continuing as usual. We are engaging with all our customers and keeping them abreast of all the developments and what all the actions we are taking. So customer timing loop, and so far, uh, uh, nothing has been impacted. Okay, no, I, I, I was just asking. Whether in future, if you want to participate in any tender, will you be able to participate? Yes, sir. This is a, a short-term default which the company is working expeditiously uh, to overcome, uh, along with, as I said, discussions with the promoters. So this is not something that is going to extend for a long period of time. Besides, also as has been approved by the board, we are looking at a long-term solution for a fundraise of a significant value. Not exceeding 1,500 crores to solve all of these problems. The balance sheet will then get fixed. The cash flow issues will no longer uh, exist, impeding our ability to attract more business. So what you are seeing right now is a short-term or near-term issue which we are working to resolve. Okay, Richard. Thank you very much. And uh, so one question is uh, about the outstanding indemnity amount uh, uh, from Mr. Koshki. uh since 2021 ever since reliance became the largest shareholder have we received any amount i mean what what is the amount that has actually been uh, uh, billed to him and what is the amount that we he have actually received until say today uh, hello Madhu, we are now. Uh, Ashish, are you asking for both sets of promoters? Because you only mentioned. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm asking for both sets of promoters. Uh, so, um, so Mr. and Koshi. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the indemnity agreement, the claim has to be raised 
on 30th September of each year. The first 300 crores, as has also been mentioned in our notes to the financial statements, had to be borne by the company. The company had provided for the total amounting to 300 crores in the quarter ended December 21. In September 22, we raised a claim of 90 crores on the promoters uh, because the total amount claimable at that point of time was 390 crores, of which 300 had to be borne by the company. The company received the 90 crores. In this uh, September, the company has raised a claim of 418 crores. Out of that, the company has already received about 43 crores from uh, the promoters. The balance is to be received, and as I said, the last date for receipt is 30th of November. Have I answered your question? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, is the company confident to receive any uh, Yes, the company is confident of receiving the money because they have paid in the past on time. Okay. okay. That's all my agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Harsh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Purswani from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. So, just wanted to seek the uh, clarity in terms of the funds requirement over the next three to six months in terms of the debt repayment. Uh, and is this amount of uh, Astral Promoter Indemnity Clause would be sufficient enough to meet these obligations? The total amount which will be required from now till, say, end of March is roughly 1,300 crores. The amount receivable from promoters is roughly 400-ish crores. And that is why the company is working on the fundraising plan, which has been mentioned in the financial statements. Okay. And in, in that context, uh, downgrade from the debt trading would have any implication in terms of the fundraising or this thing? The company is right now in discussions, doing whatever it can to its best abilities to make sure that the fundraising happens in the manner it is planned. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot for clarity. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Bala Subramanian from Arihan Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just want to understand about the Nigerian order, like uh, like uh, when the order will start uh, for executions and when it will complete and what kind of potential we have. Uh, what are the challenges we have in that order? Uh, so, Nigeria order, we are still, uh, as you know, MOU was signed last September and we are still discussing with the newly formed cabinet for the finalization of the EPC agreement and we expect it to get concluded soon. So uh, we are still working on it to get it signed. And we expect, once it is signed, so we expect revenues either in Q1 FI24 or Q2 FI24, 25, the revenues will start flowing for the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Kothari from Great Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, can you give me some guidance on the hybrid opportunities and also pure wind sector? Are we exploring the opportunities in both the domains? So, as far as the hybrid is concerned, as and when now we have started looking at them, but the hybrid pipeline is not like it's developing at this point of time. Projects are getting announced. And uh, as you would have known, we already have executed project uh, for battery energy storage system. So we are working on multiple bids in some of the select geographies uh, like Australia on uh, battery energy storage system projects coupled with solar or standalone projects. So as and when these projects will announce or pipeline will develop, so we will we'll start working on those projects. But at this point of time, I will not be able to give a concrete number for that pipeline. So what we ex shortly expect to finalize in one of the projects of that systems in one, one of the international geographies. Okay. And lastly, sir, can you give me any guidance, uh, any further development or guidance with regards to Reliance project or uh, 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 anything on that front? Thank you. So Reliance project, like as you know, the land has been allocated. We are in discussion. And we'll uh, announce when, whenever the orders are received from the land.
Okay, thank you. Thank you, that's it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Namit Arora from Ingrowth Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question was around internal communication. Uh, in terms of your engagement with the senior management team and the middle management team, uh, given the current sort of issues at the company, uh, if, if you could give us some color of your level of engagement and your efforts to maintain employee morale and momentum in these current difficult circumstances. So we we'll say that all the teams, senior management, middle management, and across all the management levels, teams are fully engaged, and the morals are very high considering the strong order book and kind of success we have seen in the domestic market. Uh, this resurgence in domestic order book, the morals are very very high. This we see that whatever the current uh, financial position which has happened is a short term phenomena, and we are working very aggressively. Uh, to address this, board has already given its mandate to work on all kind of options for fundraising. So this has been communicated across the organization. All the senior and middle management teams are fully engaged in those discussions, and they are being uh, made abreast of all the developments from time to time. So we see no issues with the morale of the team, and teams are like very bullish on the business going forward. Got it. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your detailed answer, and all the very best to the entire team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Make Shah from Prospero Tree Financial Services. Please go ahead. Morning, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. What I have a question. Uh, among uh, amongst the 329 crore of loan repayment which we had to pay in September, what amount of this was protected under the indemnity clause? Some of the loans are protected under the indemnity clause. Indemnity items are uh, more for receivables, liquidated damages, etc. Loans were taken as a bridge to meet the uh, past losses of the company. So loans cannot be indemnified. They are a means to cash flow. Okay, and this uh, 1300 crore which we have to pay until March, what about that? Also that, all none of the loans also are... That is loan, right? Yes, they are all loans. When okay. I said 1300 crores, that is the total loan, including this amount includes the present overdue. Huh? Okay, yeah, got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Faisal Hawa from HG Hawa and Company. Please go ahead. Uh, so, so, sir, there has been this, uh, you know, drop in solar panel prices and uh, other, uh, uh, you know, key, uh, key uh, raw materials also. So, uh, in the orders that we have already taken uh, from uh, most of these uh, energy PSUs, uh, what is the kind of you know, EBITDA margin improve that we expect in the next uh, year or so? The, most of the orders are like domestic, as you must have noted, 98% of the order book is domestic, and we maintain historical 10 to 11% uh, margins in those projects. Also, the fact that uh, the domestic orders are all BOS, special. so therefore there is no module in that. The only one order which we have very recently picked up is this, okay. the NDPC order. So. Leaving that aside, module price does not affect the margin improvements on our existing projects. Though, of course, the team has worked towards improved efficiency because in the Kaura region now we have uh, almost 3 plus gigawatt uh, of work happening simultaneously. And I suppose even the Reliance project is in the, in the same neighborhood, wherever it does come up. It is expected to be in that neighborhood, of course. Okay. And uh, is there, is there, you know, uh, it, would it be a right statement to make that, you know, even the battery opportunity and its EPC opportunity is almost as uh, big as the, the solar opportunity? A battery opportunity is also, I will not say as big, but it is going to be significantly high because as we move into round of law for hybrid, so then we expect that that market will be significant uh, size to be addressed both in India and internationally. 
can you give a very frank answer to this you know we are almost having like three promoters and you know all three promoters are are, are you know big industrialists in their own right so is there no kind of a, you know is, is, there, is the professional management not finding it difficult whom to report and you know with this whole turf war of uh, of the promoter themselves having to even pay uh, amounts for as indemnity is causing a lot of problem in in, in you know uh, operating so firstly i do not believe there is any turf war between any of the promoters they are all working together they are all participating in board meetings i am also a member there and I, it is done in a complete professional manner the management also does not face any challenges in talking to all three sets of promoters judiciously as and how required or give them whatever information is sought from them as far as the indemnities are concerned there is a very clear agreement uh the management works towards crystallizing of those uh, items as expeditiously as possible once the claim is raised it is sent out to all the promoters uh, including reliance and copy and uh, the payments are being made so i am not seeing any uh, turf war that we as management are finding difficult to handle or anything of that sort so So as we have alluded in our earlier calls, also the management board is providing strategic guidance and directions to the company, and we see no problems in that regard at all. Mr. Hawa, any further questions? Uh, no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one at the sign. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, with that we conclude today's conference call. On behalf of Sterling and Wilson Renewable Energy Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.